Hey friends, welcome back to another video on my channel. I'm Tanisha and I don't normally introduce myself but I'm realizing as I get more subscribers that I really should introduce myself. So hi, I'm Tanisha. Welcome to my channel. Here we discuss all things grad school and uh, my camera's dying. So we're gonna do this intro really quickly. So today we're gonna to be talking about what to do if you're not accepted into grad school, which happens, it happened to me, it happened to my friends, and it's just one of those things that does occur and I think that more people should talk about it. And so today we're gonna to be talking about the things I did when I wasn't accepted and the things that you can do if you weren't accepted into grad school and how to you know, recover from being not accepted. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing you should do when you get, when you're not accepted into grad school is I think to really take some time for yourself. It hurts to be rejected from grad school and it's not a fun thing to do, but I think if we take time to process our feelings and be, um, I don't know, be a little kinder to ourselves about why we weren't accepted, I think that it really helps in being able to springboard the rest of what you're going to do. Um, I think sometimes we just get so caught up in like our head about why we weren't accepted and why we were rejected that we don't take time to process our feelings and like it's okay like you feel bad like it does not feel good to be rejected from grad school at all it doesn't feel good to be rejected from anything and i also made a video about being rejected so i'll leave the link in the description um and if you are having some struggles with rejection be sure to check that out but i think the first thing that you should do when you are not accepted in the grad school is just take some time to process what has occurred and just you know, make sure that you're not personalizing it to you because a lot of times rejections from grad school have nothing to do with you and everything to do with that program. So first things first, take time and, you know, process your feelings. So the second thing that I would suggest doing is making sure that you, um, I guess like, Think about, is grad school really what you want to do? Um, grad school is expensive, applications are expensive, and you don't want to reapply to something that you're really not 100% sure that you want to do. So I would really take time to assess your uh, motivation, your drive, and make sure that grad school is actually what you want to do. And um, yeah, that's basically all I wanted to say about that. Sometimes people apply to grad school because they think that's what they're supposed to do or somebody has encouraged them to do it and really it's not what they want but it's what other people want for them and so I would use this time to really assess if this is what I wanna do. Okay, step number three is to look at your application and assess your weak areas and your strong areas. For me, I knew that my GRE scores were really low and I knew that I was going to have to take time to really bring those scores up. And so I also knew that my personal statement was not as strong as it could have been. I mean, it was okay, like I liked it, but it wasn't as strong as it could have been and it didn't really, it didn't properly tell the story that I wanted it to tell. And so when you don't get accepted into grad school, I think taking time to really look at your application and objectively look at it, um, to be like, mm, this area could be stronger. This area is pretty good. I don't need to do anything here. Um, and what you could do is what I did is I reached out to some professors at my undergrad university and some of the professors that I applied to and asked them for feedback on my applications to help make them stronger, to help push me to the next level when I applied the second time. So the next thing I just wanted to remind you guys is to not personalize this rejection. Lots of times grad schools and especially clinical psych programs reject you for reasons that have really nothing to do with you, like nothing to do with your application. It could be that there's a limited number of spots. It could be that the person who you wanna work with isn't accepting students. It could be like there's no funding that year. And it could be any number of things that have really nothing to do with you or your application. So I think that recognizing that and taking time to be like, okay, 
this has nothing to do with me and that's okay too. I mean, some things you might think are like, oh, my scores were too low or oh, uh, this wasn't right or this was wrong or that was wrong and these things have to do with me when really they just have to do with this system of grad school. You know, not everybody can get in and the way that clinical psych is set up, a lot of good applications fall through the cracks because of situations and external things that have nothing to do with the application. So I just wanted to remind you guys that it likely has nothing to do with you. So the next step is to make a plan. Um, once I was rejected from grad school, I started thinking about, okay, I still wanna do this grad school thing. This is really what I wanna do. I've looked at my application, figured out some of my weak areas. Okay, now I need to make a plan of how I'm going to get to the next step. And so I took a year to do um, like GRE training. I took a Kaplan class. Um, there's a video, there's actually two videos on my channel about the Kaplan class if you're interested somewhere in the YouTube universe um, about the Kaplan class and I knew I needed to get that up first and foremost. My scores were really low and I knew that I'm not the best standardized test taker so I knew I was gonna have to put extra effort into that and so that was like step one on my plan, get the GRE scores where they needed to be. Step two was I started to apply to post baccalaureate programs. Um, I applied to the NIH one and I applied to the Hot Metal Bridge program in Pittsburgh and I ended up going to the one in Pittsburgh. Um, I actually never heard back from the NIH one so that was kind of weird. But anyways, so you can start looking into programs like that. You know, those programs really help boost your application and really show how serious you are about getting into grad school. You could also look for a job in a like psychology department like a RA or if there's like a mental health um, facility near you you can get experience doing that you can be a project manager project coordinator all of those things you know that help boost your application um, for the next season um, I'm trying to think what else do people do some people even go into a master's program if their GPAs are pretty low in um, grad or in undergrad and then they do a master's program to help boost their GPA which has been helpful some of my cohort some of the people in my cohort did that and then some people did post back like I did and yeah so all that to say is make a plan you know a lot of people in clinical psych are now taking gap years so that could be a part of your plan too i took two years off technically before starting grad school well in between undergrad and grad school but i did spend a year in pittsburgh doing the post back program so make a plan and start building yourself up back to get your application back to where it needs to be, making sure it's being improved and making sure that you follow through on the plan so that you can apply again in the next cycle. Another thing that I think is very important and what really, really helped me was getting help from grad students, getting help from professors, getting help from mentors, just getting help. You know, sometimes I think people feel ashamed about asking for help. I am not one of those people. Like if I don't know how to do something, I'm like, please help me, save me. I don't know what I'm doing. And so what you can do is reach out to some of your undergrad professors and be like, hey, I'm trying to apply to grad school. Do you have any suggestions? Can we set up a time to meet so that we can work on my application? Um, can you edit this? Can you read over this? Um, you know, can you look at my application materials and tell me where my weak spots are? All those things are very beneficial and you should definitely, definitely, definitely do that. Um, you can reach out to me, I can help as best I can. Um, and yeah, or even like on social media, there have been posts going around where people have been offering help on um, other people's grad school applications. I think that is a great use of community and you should definitely get help. Like is just not an option. Like, I mean, there's an option. You don't have to do any of these steps, but I think it would really help you. The more set of eyes on your application, the better, because while sometimes you'll get conflicting information, just having people read it over and over again really will help you in the long run. Okay, so that is it for my tips on what to do when you are not accepted, like the steps you can follow. Um, I do know that being 
rejected and not being accepted in the grad school really like damages your self-esteem but you can do this and you are able and grad school is for you if you think it's for you too so i would just encourage you to stay encouraged to reach out to people who have the same experiences as you including me including other people on uh, my social media and just remember that like this is not a stopping point for you it could just be a speed bump you know to greater things and you know just i think about how great your story would be after you've gotten in you know like there's this saying that i had a professor say that said may your road be rough and so meaning that like rough roads build like stronger people and stronger vehicles it's kind of like this uh that saying a smooth never made a skilled sailor like sometimes you have to have rough patches in your trajectory of life so that you can know how to handle harder things when they come in the future so all that to say is that this is not a stopping point for you this is merely a speed bump and you can surpass the speed bump and get into grad school um, and yeah, so that's basically it from me. Um, if you have any other suggestions that people should do after they've been rejected from grad school, be sure to leave those below. Um, let's leave, if you have watched this far, leave a, let's do yellow or like citrusy color emojis, like orange, yellow, green maybe i don't know if green's considered a citrus color but whatever leave a citrus color down below if you've watched this far be sure to follow me on my instagram and be sure to like comment and subscribe share with your friends hit the little bell down below next to the subscribe button so that you never miss a video and i will see you guys next week peace